And it says, the second thing to know is one of the key tenets of Buddhism. And I was like, where the fuck is he shitbag did that come from? <laughs> Out of nowhere, it's like chapter seven. Like, And in Buddhism, he says, desire is the source of all suffering, which is wrong. Like the, the actual quote from the Buddha is, desire is the root of suffering. The fact that he's attributing that to the destructive desire for pussy is really like, I don't think that's what the Buddha intended. <laughs> Hello, lovely people. Welcome back to my channel today. I am joined by why your mom deserves me <laughs> aka savvy rights books and we are going through I, I, I don't know what word incredible in the truest sense of the word the incredible why women deserve less by myron Gaines. what a phenomenon we're on chapter five so if you would like to hear us give a little overview and run down chapters one through four go and see that on savvy's channel it is available now chapter five the ugly truth it's making this claim at the start of this chapter right most women simply don't like most men very much and never did. And I'm like, how can you possibly quantify that? <laughs> it's like bizarrely black and white thinking. Like, or did they just poll a load of women? Of like, do you like men? I want. <laughs> How they just they like, like accidentally went to a lesbian bar and did the poll and all of the women were like, no, not really. And then they were no. like, 100% of women don't like men. So it gets into like a lot of, um, like, this is very like Rollo Tomasi kind of style stuff. It talks about how like more women than men have contributed to the gene pool. Um, part of this is likely sort of cultural to do with uh, a small number of men reproducing with a large number of women. The article that this information comes from, again, I don't know how much they're expecting people to actually go and read the sources. But the end of the article says, now we need to investigate why this is the case. But in the book, Myron's just assuming with no evidence and no good reason that it's because women don't like men. It's like, source my asshole, I guess. Like, yeah. <laughs> the article that you're using says, we haven't yet investigated why. It's interesting though, isn't it? And he's just like, see, it's because women hate men. And you're like, <laughs> They draw a lot of conclusions. That's that's what I've noticed a lot here. There's a lot of like, here's a fact. We're going to draw a conclusion and it could be due to this. It could be due to a bunch of other external factors, but we're going to say it's because of this. It's also funny how much he sucks Rolo's dick in this book because I have it on record of Rolo saying that he thinks Fresh and Fit is stupid, but he's been on their podcast so many times, so I don't know. There's some, uh, some more fun stats about how women don't like sex as much as men. Um, again, it's using a lot of data that has cultural implications that just aren't mentioned, like, again, porn consumption, where the majority of pornography is made for men and marketed towards men. And then this is the bit where they say about lesbian sex versus gay sex. And so the source here is a Psychology Today article, a very short article that references some US studies. Um, and the article itself points out that these studies often only consider sexual intercourse and not other types of sexual activity, like oral or genital touching. And I'm reading this like, that's quite likely to skew the data on lesbian sexual activity, no? Like, well, lesbians, most lesbians don't have penis, so. <laughs> Again, he makes no mention of this in the, in the book, whatever. And then he cites more dating app data and I'm just not willing to give it the time of day. Although he does say, this is the second time he starts a sentence with admittedly, he says, admittedly, online dating is not the real world. And I'm like, yes, exactly. So stop including it as statistics. When it comes to a lot of these sources, so first of all, the one with like male couples versus lesbian couples. First of all, I was like, if we are willing to acknowledge lesbians as a concept that exists in this book, we know that there's all this other stuff about women provide reproduction and sex to men and men provide resources to women cannot be true in 100% of cases because lesbians exist. You are willing to acknowledge that. We know it's not the majority of women, but the fact that they exist proves that this is not cut and dry evolutionary science like you're trying to say that it is. On top mm -hmm. of that, like you just said, if it's not including oral, which is like... In my experience with women, a lot of what oral we Oral and genital touching. And Jen are like fingering and stuff like that. So it's counting sex. It's 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 defining sex as putting a penis into an orifice. Pretty much, yeah. Or or like penetrative sex in or some. Or like fashion. using a strap on or something. I guess if it's only also what lesbians reported on this, it was like every six days we use a strap on, but every three days we eat each other out. But every, like what? <laughs> Who was yeah, being that specific yeah. in the first place? It's, yeah, it's really bizarre. That's not it's a whole thing. I'm like, first bizarre. of all, I don't believe that. Also, if it was measuring frequency, like, a lot of, just because, like, most men have the, like, 
it's called like the refractory period where it's like after you have sex then you have to wait like a few hours before you can do it again but a lot of women yeah. just go straight in a row like men typically have a much longer refractory period yeah yeah they might like if two men have sex and then have to wait like a couple hours before they can do it again they might include that as like that we had sex twice today whereas like women might do it just like for a, a four or five hours straight and say oh that was all one time because there was no break in it yeah like, so i'm just saying there's so many external factors to how you could measure that that i don't believe this is true um no. the one about porn consumption did did it only include porn as like video content because from my understanding like just i don't know why it is but in general men tend to be more visually stimulated than women and women tend to be mm -hmm. more like which is not true in 100 percent of cases but just like on average women tend to be able to like make visuals in their mind more so that's why you have like the romance novel industry is very heavily women dominated and the visual like porn on on like video industry is very male mm -hmm. dominated but if you look yes. into the world of like erotica novels it's almost all women writing it and almost all women reading it yeah i mean look at yeah. it, like look at mills and boone i don't know if you do you have mills and boone in the u.s it's like I um think so. it's like it's a little bit boomery now i have like, i randomly have a stack of them just from digging them out of a, a loft it's yeah i so i have a stack of old mills and boons but it's basically those like saucy um sexy romance novels yeah. for women that have existed yeah. for so so long like women have always been interested in and um, had pornography marketed to them just not like video content so exactly yeah. so i'm like so, if you're only the including pornography film video... industry is yeah. really male dominated if you're just including porn as videos then yeah you're gonna have a lot higher levels of male consumption of it because that's who is dominating that industry but if you're also including literature and like books and things like that then it's going to I i'd yeah. say i don't have any studies i feel like it's a lot closer to equal if you're going to include both of those things but yeah it's like it's like a running joke even in like sitcoms and movies and stuff that women love these sexy books it's like it's a known yeah. thing it's not considered the same as like video pornography for some reason he doesn't specify but i assume he meant like video content yeah but just all these things that we're even coming up with it's making me think like there's so many external factors to everything you're talking about here that when you're listing all these statistics which are probably true in the in the studies that were done about those very specific things you're drawing these massive conclusions when there are so many other things that haven't yet been studied or that were studied mm -hmm. but weren't talked about in this book. It's just such a dishonest attempt at trying to make a point. And it's like, see, as a result, men want sex more than women want sex. Women don't care about sex. And it's like, I don't think that's true. But you, I, I know mm -hmm. I like to have sex a lot, so... You're just an not, outlier. He's not proven anything. Abby, you're, like Spider's Georg, you're an outlier and shouldn't be counted. <laughs> well... Yeah, that's what we're gonna get into when I, I, I've marked up so many places in the book where I'm like, this is not my experience. But then again, I just get told I'm an outlier about everything. They're like, Me women too. never initiate yeah. dates. Women, I was like, not only did I ask Tyler on our first date, I also asked him to marry me. And also I was, I had a job and he was unemployed when I asked him to marry me. But like, I'm an outlier. I don't count. I don't represent women. I'm. I don't count. We go into like a, a another kind of stereotypical red thing here, where women only like top tier men, um, and it nearly makes some like valuable points about um, Instagram and social media kind of skewing the idea of beauty, which would be great if they acknowledged that unrealistic standards affect women too. But once again, men are the fragile, sensitive ones that are affected by everything. Women just aren't affected by these things. It's freaking bizarre. And there's no sources cited in this section about women looking for something better. It's this monkey branching thing where like women will always be on the lookout for someone better, blah, blah, blah. I did, um, there is a, there's another quote here that I really enjoy. Unfortunately, because of the male sex drive, women are inundated with thousands of offers. And I'm just like, <laughs> thousands. <laughs> the men literally can't help themselves. They can't help themselves, Happy, because women are so beautiful and so amazing that they. But have women are to also really them. ugly because we've been ruining our bodies with tattoos and piercings and dyeing our hair purple, and we look like shit all the time. But also, <laughs> men still want to have sex with us a thousand times a month. Yeah. So hold on. Something doesn't add up here. Something in well, the Well, no, it's amazing. because the male sex drive is so powerful, dude. It transcends everything. <laughs> all men want is sex. They don't have any thoughts in their head. They don't have any desire. Yeah. Except they also are smarter than women because they built the entirety of society. So men are constantly 
blinded by sex as the only thing they can think about, but also they're at busy doing work for society. But it's because then they can become the kind of man who can get women. They only do all this stuff so that women will have sex with that. It, it, dude, it does. none of this book makes any sense. <sighs> so yeah, this was the part where I talked about my personal experience. It was page 28. When's the last time if ever a girl asked you out, took you to dinner, or initiated contact for any social, romantic, or sexual interaction? I was like, I, I do that. Not now because I'm married, but like, I asked Tyler to marry me. I asked him on our first date when we were 14. I mm -hmm. asked him on most of our dates as we were like getting into a relationship. I initiated getting back together with him when we were like on and off for a while. We got back together when we were 22. I initiated, I initiated everything. And I'm like, maybe he's a beta male. <laughs> Maybe, maybe I'm a, a, a low value woman. I don't know. But my point is, they're like, this never happens. And I'm like, it does, though. It does. And I'm not, you could, you could say I'm an outlier, but like, I know other women who do this too. I know plenty of other, yeah. like, this is not that far outside the norm. And if it was that, like, you know, women who ever initiate stuff, we're, we're just always outliers. If, if it was that we were outliers, like, it's ignoring the entire cultural context and reason for that. Like, the, you know, like, women have a history of like being set up for romance by their fathers like you know there's there's reasons for these things to be the cultural norm the thing is the problem with this kind of red pill stuff is it it punishes women for breaking that social norm it wants women to be like it supposedly wants women to be like submissive and quiet and to let a man take the lead but then it punishes women if they do do that it's like it's a, a just another example of like women can't win in this worldview right i'm like okay so you say the old contract is better where men initiate everything and men pay for everything women have sex with you whenever you want but that's also bad because men are victimized by women not asking them out and men are victimized by having to pay for everything yeah it doesn't which, make sense which, what, do you, what do you actually want <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, chapter six. I'm so I, I, I'm gonna start getting like PTSD every time I see the words the contract. The contract. Um, oh, this <laughs> this is the first time the book uses the word sexual marketplace, which oh is one God, of my least like... favorite red pill terms. I hate that. The sexual just marketplace. Like, the sexual marketplace. Just again, it repeats this idea that men trade women resources and protection for sex and children like times were better when women were fuck factories but once again i feel like i, I i'm worried that this is well not worried but i have this feeling that this is myron projecting again when he's talking about like men can't do without sex he calls it a non-negotiable addiction and i'm like fucking speak for yourself mate <laughs> like, that's the line i highlighted that i was about to read the male sex drive <laughs> is the most powerful biological force in the world making sex more of a non-negotiable addiction I, I feel like you're just telling on yourself dude yeah this bit does like this is probably the most problematic sort of bit for me just because it's like that it, it talks about when it talks about the olden days it's like slightly the language a little bit rapey around like women in the olden days like earlier in the book it said about like women having sex even if they didn't want to um yeah. along with the endorsement of andrew and tristan tate and everything that's going there so while the section isn't explicitly like rape apologetic it doesn't sit well with me it like it, it it sort of suggests as a whole that like men can't men struggle to cope with a society that has protections against harassment of women because like men literally can't help themselves and that's so dangerous it's it's insulting to normal men who have like needs and interests outside of sex like yeah it's, it's insulting to them like men aren't animals that can't help themselves like they're, <laughs> they're also people it, dancing around this topic means that whenever like a a potential rapist or a harasser or somebody reads this they uh they're enabled by this this is enabling that kind of behavior and yeah. like this part got like weirdly rambly and i didn't really know what was going on with the rest of this it says like very little and doesn't have any references and basically i think kind of boiled down to like women realized they could use men's desire for sex against them um, there's the army of oh, simps section where it talks about like girls making only fans and like getting men to pay them for sex yeah and it's like yeah okay, but supply and demand my dude like if you're willing to pay for it then someone's going to be willing to sell it to you so uh, this is capitalism but capitalism caused the welfare state according to you again this book is all over the fucking place yeah, i don't know there's another good quote though that 
also still kind of makes men sound pathetic. Men's addiction to pussy has allowed women to violate the new contract and abuse remnants of the old ways. <laughs> so it's like you're acknowledging that it's men's fault that this is happening, but you don't want to do anything to fix that because men needing sex at all times is just such an irrefutable law of nature. There's nothing that can ever be done about it. It's men can't help it. Just They just so desperately need a crumb of pussy please miss can i have a crumb of pussy it's very <laughs> sad <laughs> if we were going to go by this like black and white oversimplified evolutionary uh science made up shit that they're going with wouldn't wouldn't it make sense then for women to want to breed with the beta males because if they're less sexually aggressive then men will evolve like the gene pool will evolve away from the sexually aggressive men and they will get bred out over time. I, that's not the yeah. way it happens. Uh, human evolution is so incredibly complex, but like if we were going to go with his oversimplified view, that would be a good thing because there'd be less violence in the world then, right? I just, sorry, I just got some of my notes and I remembered what the next bit is about. It has this bit about, um, so now we're getting into men having worthwhile degrees and contributing. Yes, I have so society. many notes on this page. Men built society. I hear this so much. Whenever you, if you mention any kind of inequality, like gender inequality, men will be like, oh, but we, bu we built the roads. Or, and you're just like, men went to war. And I was like, you've never been to war. What are you talking, women are in the army now. What does this mean? And he goes into like top 10 careers for men, plumbers, pipe fitters, steam fitters, electricians, carpenters, auto mechanics. He goes on about, oh, society couldn't function. And he goes on like, if all men quit their jobs today, society would collapse. But if all women quit their jobs, we'd be fine. And it's like, well, Myron, if you quit your job, we would be fine. Like, you are a gender studies influencer. All you do is podcast talking about gender studies. That's all you do. If this is a problem, then you are the biggest yeah. contributor to it. And he goes on with the top 10 careers for women. And they're all careers that, like, society would would also collapse if those stopped. Like, preschool and kindergarten teachers and things, child care workers. Okay, so let's say all child care workers and all teachers quit their jobs right now. Now you have a lot of kids. Where do they go? Because dad has to be out plumbing and pipe fitting and fixing cars. So they're clearly not going to go stay home with dad because where do they go? Now we mm -hmm. just have a bunch of children, like... If, if, if caring for the next generation is important for building society, then yes, children needing an education and needing supervision by an adult is also a job that if it, they all quit right now, society would also collapse. What are you talking yeah. about? And it also includes like the the list includes like dental assistants and medical assistants, and I'm just like, and I've I've had this argument about um, like red people making red people red <laughs> red pill people people making this argument like before that you know if you removed all women from society it wouldn't collapse sort of thing, and I'm just like, oh, go ahead, remove all the women from medicine and see what happens because like that's the majority of medical care just because like the majority of doctors are men and women make up more a higher percentage of like medical assistants and nurses and stuff like that doesn't mean that medicine will function if you remove all of those jobs like it's it's insane the fact that it lists really important jobs and then is like so those aren't those don't matter those are stupid things it's like you just, this, this is like medicine, dentistry, like childcare, teaching. What are you talking about? Society would absolutely collapse without those things. And like the majority of medical care that you're getting is not going to a surgeon all the time, right? The majority of medical yeah. care, you're probably going to see a nurse, you're going to see a, a medical assistant. And for the majority of medical problems, that's all you're going to need to do. You're not actually going to ever need mm -hmm. to see like the top surgeon or like the head doctor at the practice for a lot of things. So yeah, if we suddenly eliminated all women from healthcare, there would be there would just That's be this like, crisis, like there wouldn't be enough uh, medical professionals to assist people. It's just repeating classic red pill talking points. Like he's not thought about it that much. He just knows that this is a popular talking point. I think that's why it doesn't really make sense. He goes on about how women don't work enough and then says to maintain their traditional living standards, they could marry a higher income man, but that is off the table for an increasing percentage of women in today's post marriage new contract world. And I'm like, okay, so do you want women to i'm just so... what do you want <laughs> what do you want it sounds like he wants women to marry rich young but then that's a bad thing so i don't like if women want to I marry higher know. income men isn't that also a sign of women being evil like you said earlier because they only want exactly. the top percentage of men and then the rest of the men who are like beta males are going to be victimized so is it a good thing that women 
won't marry a guy just based on his income, or is that a bad thing? I'm lost, because he seems to think both, depending on what page we're on. Yeah, like, and, and this part as well, I was thinking about this, I was thinking about you when I was reading this, because I knew that we were going to review this together. Um, like, he talks about how women um, work less, they all want a free ride and stuff, and I'm like, you and I know how many women, especially, like, stay-at-home moms, military wives, so on and so forth, like, will desperately seek, like, side hustles and work insane hours, even while looking after the kids, just to, like, feel like they're contributing enough. It's like, the idea that women as a whole just don't want to work hard is insane. <laughs> There's also also an issue with a lot more women are willing to identify as stay-at-home moms than da men are to identify as stay-at-home yeah. dads, even if they're doing the same work. So, like, a lot of women who are writers, for example, like, if you're a professional writer and you work from home, you could be like, oh, I can be a professional writer because I'm a stay-at-home mom. And I'm like, okay, well, that doesn't make sense to me because I thought the term stay-at-home mom meant that you don't have another career, which is fine, mm -hmm. but I, otherwise you would be a working mom. But a lot of men who would be, like, a professional writer staying at home would identify themselves as a working parent whereas a lot of times like i read so many biographies of women that are like i'm a stay-at-home mom and a freelance journalist and i'm like well you can be like a, a, a working mom who works from home like i just don't see as many men who are willing to say i am a stay-at-home dad when they do the same work from home so it, again it's it's a personal identification thing i'm not saying anyone is right mm -hmm. or wrong for talking about their life you put at the forefront whatever experience you think matters most to you but it's not again it's not like an accurate way of measuring it because you have so many it's not so cut and dry yeah it's not so cut and dry exactly so these are all based on like self-reported things so mm -hmm. a lot more women are going to report not working when in fact they are working just because they're more likely to identify with being a stay-at-home mom just because of how much you know we hear that term and it's talked about a lot it's just more normalized in our minds so i think mm -hmm. that's definitely a factor that goes into it as well oh my gosh here's another quote of like one of my favorite quotes from the book men are closer to unconditional love than women citation <laughs> needed <laughs> like, how the hell do you measure that what an insane statement <laughs> like and and again like red pill men constantly tell me i'm living in a fantasy land for bringing in bringing up the fact that love exists but like apparently men are closer to unconditional love than women are i don't even know what what does closer mean in that i i have it's just like an insane thing to say i don't know what that means but it's really funny <laughs> she talks about social media and dating apps women are only using it to get attention and we know this mm -hmm. because they're not actually going on the dates and it's like well first of all men do that too did we include men in this in this discussion at all and second of all mm -hmm. some people go on dating apps with that explicit intention if especially if it's not like if you're going on an app that's like which one is it like hinge the one that's supposed to be for relationships women-led yeah 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 or like i think bumble's like women-led and then there's like hinge which is like Bumble. an app that's like for relationships as opposed to hookups or things like that but if you're on mm. an app that has an option for just hookups or just like i just want to have like a sexy conversation with someone that's a valid thing to do on that app if you're upfront about your intention that doesn't mean that you're using it in some kind of manipulative way men should not feel victimized if women say hey i'm not here for a relationship sometimes they're just not like there's there's that's yeah. not that's not a sign again he's only using tinder here and tinder as an app has a culture of hookup on it as well as relationships a lot of people go on tinder just for like one night stands or whatever yeah. so to make it out like it's like oh women are just on tinder for attention they're not here for relationships mm -hmm. it's like well a lot of men aren't on tinder for relationships either at the very least like use some other metric other than tinder because that is that's the wrong community to be looking at if you're looking at relationships yeah this is yeah i i have this rant a lot because like red pill information the stats obsessed red pill dudes really rely on tinder data and like just on the surface level like there are so many more men than women on tinder that like that inherently skews the data massively you know like you can't judge the real world based on a largely hookup app like right. and again especially during covid like <laughs> this is just insane levels of like reaching i i like this this bit like rants a bit about how girls go on dates but don't put out so that again the problem is that women are no longer financially dependent on men and yet apparently most women will lead men on for a free meal and i'm like what women in this universe in the universe of this book don't make sense like what <laughs> this, is, this seems contradictory there's no evidence supplied we just assume that it's true because myron has a podcast i just i don't yeah it doesn't make sense 
It's weird how much he ignores, like, where he's like, you know, women are just on Tinder to get attention. Men are there to, to find dates. And it's like, there is a large number of men who are on Tinder to jerk off, who just want to get nudes and want to just send their nudes. And some people just exchange their nudes and then they move on with their life. And it's like, that's you didn't yeah. include men in this at all. You only talked about what women are doing wrong. Now, now do the same thing, but show me the sources on the men who are on Tinder just to get pictures of boobs and stuff. They yeah. exist too, and there's nothing wrong with that. If you're upfront about your intention, you do you live your life. Like I'm not, I don't have any problem. Right, with that. exactly. Yeah, yeah. it's it's almost like, and again, I feel like this is a bit of projection. It's almost like dating apps aren't used for what I would specifically want to use them for, and therefore it's bad. And exactly, it's like, well, that works for other people though. So let them let them do their thing. So he lists some policies here that contain some generally good advice, but that it's a bit basic, and I don't know how much we need to go into it. But it's basically like know when to quit and i'm like yeah don't harass a person you've been out with if they don't want to see you again like facetime to make sure she is who she says she is and i'm like yeah this is this is fine it's sort of like the the self-explanatory basic common sense information that makes you think that he knows what he's talking about um but this is where he does say in short women deserve less and i'm like that's the title of the book. Yeah, he has a whole thing it's throughout the section where he's like, women deserve less here. Don't don't spend so much money on women. They deserve less. Don't spend so much time yeah. on women. They deserve less. The, the section about marriage he goes into is a little bit mm. strange because he talks about how you shouldn't date a woman who has kids because if she has kids, that's like baggage. You don't want to date a woman who has kids. But you also don't want to get married to a woman but having kids is something that a lot of people want to do and if you want to have kids go for it so it's like is he saying that like is it just like the legality of marriage that he's like just don't enter into the government contract but have kids anyway is that what he's saying like or do you think that it's Maybe? a good idea to like it's very, very weird where he's like don't ever marry someone marriage is bad i think we can make plenty of critiques of uh the ways that governments handle marriage and the ways that it's encoded in law is there's a lot of really weird stuff in there that doesn't make a lot of logical sense in terms of how how uh things are done legally from that standpoint but I don't think that means that marriage itself is inherently bad. The sort of he he never explains it is the problem. And in in throughout the book, he just he never he doesn't give a, a reason why marriage is bad. So you're just kind of left like I guess it's bad because women are bad. I'm not really sure. Like again, is that just I'm supposed to connect those dots? Or um, I, I want I wanted to get your take on this sentence specifically because you are a married woman. Marriage is hands down the dumbest decision a man can make. <laughs> If he he doesn't back it up. I thought maybe he would back that up with something like it's the dumbest decision a no. man can make because when filing jointly on your taxes, men's tax returns go down by X percent due to their wife making less income. Or so I thought he would have something like that. There's no sources here. He's like, it's dumb no. because 14 percent of marriages are happy. No source for that. There's no there's no oh, no. So yeah, so there was no source for this. 14 um, percent of marriages are based on what? How do we I, quantify happiness? <laughs> Well, I found this, I always think that, like, censorship data and, like, studies on happiness, I, I don't trust them super much anyway, because how do people quantify happiness? And when you split it by gender, like, men are less likely to report problems, like, especially mental yeah. health stuff. It's, like, a really complicated thing to study. But so all my reading in the past has basically suggested that married people are generally healthier, happier, and live longer, like, on average. So I was like, okay, I'll look this up. And I had to blow past so many, like blogs, dodgy psychology magazines, Huffington Post articles, like all of this stuff to find like any real info. Um, and again, I found a bit of stuff from uh, a US census and some Pew Research articles and so on. And everything I found said the average percentage of reporting happily married couples was in the high 60s to 70s. So I have no idea where the 14% came from. He doesn't from. cite doesn't it at all. Off, like, as far as I can tell, that is just made up. Yeah, like, it, that's... And for a guy who loves statistics, he gives no statistics about what the, like, material harm is to men in a marriage. He, I thought he would say something like, when the divorce happens, women are likely to get X percentage of the assets, or according to this study, this number of women go into marriage with less financial means but leave with greater fi I thought he would have something. Nothing. Instead, mm. he's just like, don't no. get married because plenty of women will say they love you, but then they'll divorce you. And it's just like yeah. made up hypothetical situations. Oh. And because, here's another good quote, nearly every wife gets fat after being married. 
<laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, typically, like, couples tend to put on more weight than single people, but he doesn't mention men because men are allowed to get fat. It's men, only women men are, that are allowed to get fat. get fat. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And also, I, I think it's also just that, like, people who get married tend to be older like they tend to be like in their late 20s early 30s things like that and that's yeah, just and the age when your body you just <laughs> your body just yeah. gains more weight at those ages because you don't have the same like metabolism that your body had yeah. when you were a growing teenager and things like that there's just again so many cool. external factors here that are being completely ignored in favor of picking like specific points that if you put them next to each other can can show a part of a picture but not the whole thing you do the math yeah you for do sure the math um, this bit made me laugh so much. Women bitch about house chores while the man is fixing the house and the cars. And I'm like, bruh, like, first of all, how privileged a position are you writing from if you're like, everybody has multiple cars? But right? also, I, like, I don't even have one car. <laughs> me neither. Unless you're like <laughs> redeveloping or some shit. Like, what man is constantly fixing the house and the cars? Like, get a new car. <laughs> Right? It's like uh, men are always fixing all of the stuff while women just do chores. And yeah, I, I I think that's reflective of like a sort of cultural thing where when it where it is seen as normal for women to do house chores, men have no idea what that actually entails. Like I think maybe Myron just doesn't know what like he just imagines like his wife doing the dishes like all hours of the day or I I don't, I don't know. It's very yeah. bizarre. Well, it was funny because there was that uh interview with those guys from daily wire like matt walsh and ben shapiro and those guys and they were asking like would you rather have to do the dishes or the laundry and all of them were like i don't actually know how to do the laundry and I'm like what do you mean you yeah. don't know how to do it even if you've never done it before you put the laundry in the machine and you hit the button and you put in the it's soap the buttons say what to do it tells yeah. you what to do on the machine <laughs> what do you mean you don't know you've never done a load of laundry in your entire life and you're like a, a 40 year old man how does this happen like what what do you do if your wife goes away for a girly weekend like what do you just not oh, do the laundry <laughs> like they're not allowed to do that their wives aren't allowed to go away right there was another great, great quote uh in this bit talking about the differences between men and women and like how men are so sex obsessed we'll throw our friends under the bus to get laid and i'm like bitch i don't want a man like that <laughs> what happened <laughs> to bros before hoes dude like no <laughs> yeah and this is all about uh women get preferential treatment there's some uh, more stuff about how men are the ones who die in war and again in 2023 women are also in the military and like this is a thing i see specifically a, a lot from men in the u.s um where they like want some kind of chivalry credit for men in history having been at war and it's like that Myron, you that wasn't you though. Like <laughs> You didn't do that, bud. You, you just have a podcast about gender studies. Society would function yeah. without you, Myron. <laughs> like hundred percent. Uh it blames universities again for like encouraging women to get educations and like repeat stuff about women getting useless degrees. It feels very insecure. Like that this this feels like it comes from a place of like you know, like personal insecurity. He has this whole section about how men lie to women just because they want to have sex with them and he's like mm. that lie is that women are not responsible for anything historically men have lied to women in this way to curry favor with them to fuck them but nothing on the scale of what we do today we tell women their sociology degree should earn just as much as a man's chemical engineering degree we tell them their children have mental issues because of adhd not their neglect we tell women that big is beautiful society lies to women in every capacity and regard and he goes on like this and i'm like okay well first of all I'm an outlier, so maybe my opinion doesn't count for anything, but just speaking from my personal experience, as somebody who got diagnosed with ADHD when I was 29, it's not because my mom was neglectful. I had literally the most involved mom in the world. Like, you've met my mom. You've met my mom. She is- I love my mom. <laughs> my mom's great. She's the most involved. She's awesome. She was the mom who was like, you know, every sports game, I'm there in the sands. Every day after school, we're gonna, I'm going to check your homework. I am I know where you are at all hours of the day. Like, my mom was <laughs> extremely involved. You never met a more involved mom. She did. Neglect was the opposite of what my mom did. And I still ended up with ADHD. So I don't know. Maybe there is external factors here. Maybe moms neglecting their children isn't giving them ADHD. I don't think that's how it works. I don't think that's how psychologists would tell you it works. Also, I don't know who tells women that their sociology degrees are earn just as much as a man's chemical first of all degrees don't earn you anything the degrees job you, don't, uh, yeah I the job you get weird. with the degree earns you something so if you get a job in a sociology field that is in more demand in the market right now than 
let's say you have a chemical engineering degree, but the entry level job you get is at a lower level and just doesn't earn you as much. Like that's not lying to women. That has to do with what jobs were in demand at the moment. That's capitalism, bro. But again, capitalism yeah. caused the welfare state and caused women. It's, it's all like a giant stopped, conspiracy. <laughs> Yeah, um, he he has this advice for women that men are like tragically programmed by society not to say, oh, which includes stop majoring in stupid shit. Stop yeah. majoring in stupid shit. Don't get fat and don't be a promiscuous whore. <laughs> it's like okay, so he's like thanks, nobody Byron. tells women the truth. I'm like I've been told these things constantly. People tell me this. What do you mean nobody tells women this? People tell women all the time. Don't major in something. Well, it's stupid. because they're people... frowned upon, Savvy. It's because when men tell that to you, other people are like, "Wow, that's kind of rude." The fact that they get told off for saying rude stuff that means that society won't allow it. Poor men are so yeah, trampled it's, on. Yeah, it's, it's uh, against your free speech that people just don't personally like what you said. But you yeah. absolutely can say it. I've had men tell me not to be such a promiscuous whore all the time. I get told that constantly. Yeah, it's really bizarre. And uh, there was one, like, there's a lot of stuff. He says some stuff about patriarchy, which he doesn't explain. And I have to assume he doesn't understand. But there's only one bit I really wanted to touch on because I hear it a lot in like anti-feminist kind of discussions which is the rate at which women are awarded custody of their children compared to men because they never talk about the reasons why they just use it to claim that like women as a whole are evil or selfish and so like so one factor in assigning custody that a judge looks into is who's the more active parent and that comes from like schools and people like that and i'm like in this book myron argues that women should be the most active parent and that they should be looking after the children all day. In which case, why would he expect the like absent father to get custody? And why is that women's fault? The so the other the other reason that is obviously the one that these people are actually complaining about is gender stereotyping. But this is the same thing that women's rights activism wants to tackle, exactly. right? Which is yes. you know, the the stereotypical views of women as the inherent caregivers and having this parental role above everything else. But this book advocates for those stereotypes. It wants women to be the primary mothers and caregivers with the main bulk of responsibility for raising the children, but then also blames women from for benefiting from that in custody court. It's like it's it's the ultimate like wanting to have your cake and eat it too. And again, like I've said this like five times already, but it, there's no other way to explain it. It's like whatever the outcome, it is women's fault. Like whatever situation or society or culture we're in. It's bad because women, like, it doesn't make, it's thing. so I've contradictory. From the beginning that I would love to see dads get custody more often too, because it's a sign that like, if you're stereotyping that women are inherently better caregivers, that's also the same stereotypes that leads employers to not want to hire women thinking they're going to take maternity leave and like come up with some fake reason not to hire them. It's the same thing that keeps women from advancing yeah. their careers is what keeps men from getting custody. In those cases, there exactly. are plenty of cases where like, it's just that the woman was a more involved involved parent and the courts took that into account and there wasn't a sexist bias in place but in the cases where there is i completely agree with that um i don't know though i think we need to go to daddygotcustody.com to learn all, more about the truth as that is the source yeah daddygotcustody.com oh slash that. fathers win full custody that's where we need to go oh yeah and i was like you know i was reading an article the other day that was talking about how there are a lot of fathers who want to spend more active care time at home but like the the legal system doesn't really allow for that in the moment like you don't get the same kind of paternity leave and stuff like that like we all fight the same stereotypes together that are causing problems you know for women in the workplace that are causing problems for women who don't want to be stay-at-home mums that are causing fathers the problem when they do want to be stay-at-home fathers then we, we we've all got the same goal and yeah. whatever but we can't work together because this guy that's complaining about it is like but it's all women's fault because women are evil. Well, and if that's we go like back the end to, of the discussion. If we go back to page 24, paternity leave, you know, men mm -hmm. having equal leave to take control with their or take uh, care of their kids and be there for them. According to Myron, that's also women's fault and is a bad thing. Paternity leave existing is a bad thing because he says when he's saying men gave women everything they could ever want, we gave them, you know, voting rights or whatever. And he even says maternal leave and paternal leave he has them both in there as things that we gave to women so does paternity leave benefit women or does it benefit men or like is that not something that you want you think paternity leave is something that benefits women that you gave to them as a gift however you also 
want custody of your children, so you want to get rid of the stereotype that women are better caregivers so that men can get equal custody, but you think that paternity leave is not equally valid. Like, I don't get... What what is he talking about? There's no about? logical cohesion in any of this. Like, so are you ready for chapter seven? You, you deserve, deserve more, they more deserve they less. Deserve. <laughs> yeah. I like this. Okay, right. Every man has three resources, time, money, and energy. Famously, women are not subject to the whims of time. We no, transcend women, time and space. Women transcend time and space. Women are not beholden to the laws of physics or the universe. We can time travel. Um we we don't uh yeah women are time lords men are just men <laughs> men are just sex addicted sad sad creatures yeah there's so i i need your help on this bit as well because he has these like really specific sort of funny digs at men wasting their time and he says stuff like going to school for plumbing or political science and i don't i genuinely don't know which one is supposed to be the bad one and like he says like working an extra shift or playing video games and that was a bit easier and then going to the gym or jerking off to porn and I'm like well I assume he's saying going to the gym is better but then I thought men couldn't help being sex addicted so I'm, I don't know what like is plumbing bad or is political science bad I like, think what? political I can't... science is supposed to be bad I think plumbing is the good one because society couldn't function without it but political science right. is uh, it, it's a made up field so it's like gender studies or sociology. Does he want like a dictatorship or something because like, like who? how are we going to get I think people so because he thinks that people he thinks that democracy is bad because democracy is what led people to voting for the welfare state. So I think yes, true, yes but true. it's not he doesn't really ever clearly outline it. I no. will say this is the chapter where there are parts like if you took out all the stuff about men versus women, some of the advice would be good because it's where he's talking yes. about like, don't take out stupid loans from the bank. Don't buy an apartment that you can't afford. Don't uh, pay for a car and like put a down payment on a car with a, a interest rate that you're is going to fuck you over. Like, like, don't do that stuff. Yes, I agree. Yeah. He's like, don't do these things to impress women. Instead, do these things for yourself and your own goals. Work on your own life and, and your career and your physical and mental health. Like, work on yourself and then don't worry about just trying to impress women. I was like, that is accurate. That is good advice. Yeah. If a man reads this book and takes away from this, I should go to the gym instead of wasting my time, you know, just swiping on Tinder all day. Sure, that might be a better choice Hooray. for you. If you think, like, yeah. I should go to school and focus on my studies rather than trying to make my apartment really sexy for all the women I want to bring home from the bar, yeah, that is better advice. I agree. So if that's what a man takes away from this book, power to you. But all this other stuff in here that's like, it's because women are going to fuck you over. It's because women deserve less. It's because women are, are out here trying to take all your money and trying to just be big whores on the internet all day. Mm -hmm. Like, none of that is related. None of I mean, it's not even true, but it's also just even if it were, it's not related to the advice that you're giving. Just like, yeah. give that advice and move on. That's all you need. Yeah, but you've got, it's not red pill if you don't properly sprinkle in a lot of women hate throughout it. Like, you Otherwise, have to remind it's just it basic self-help book but, advice. Yeah. This is just basically yeah. like, you could have bought a self-help book by anyone and learned that. We've got to make it stand out from the crowd by making it extreme. Which is, again, why this is a grift. Because if you boil it down to that oh, piece yeah. of advice... That advice you could get from from anyone who is a a successful person who has who yeah you can get that advice from anyone. All of the mm -hmm. rest of this, uh, this is just yeah. We we get um the phrase emotional tampon and friend zone <laughs> in the same sentence, which is like high level cringe. Like, and I again, it's this basic thing in like red pill of just sort of forgetting that men and women can be friends. Like the whole emotional tampon thing. I'm like, I'm some of my friends' emotional tampon, as in like they can vent to me if they need it. That's part of friendship. Like it doesn't mean I'm not like oh why are they telling me their problems without having sex with me? It's not like it's so. You you can just have you can have a friend who's a woman and that could be okay like it's fine this is like this oh. book gives me a headache when it tries to like quantify human interactions into these very like deliberate boxes like no human would mm. do this unless this was the motivation and humans are motivated to do this by this it's like 
it almost hurts your brain. It's like, it's got to be exhausting to live your life thinking so deeply about every single thing that you do. Sometimes I'm just talking to someone because I enjoy talking to them. Sometimes you just, yeah. wanna, there's no like ulterior motive here. Like this is not being an emotional tampon. This is not someone taking advantage of your emotions. Like be upfront and honest if you don't want to be friends with someone without sex. I've had plenty of cases where it's like, someone you know you have a sexual relationship and they're like you want to stay friends but you don't actually want to stay friends don't stay friends then it's like there's no like manipulation here it's all just be honest and upfront with each other that's all that matters but men and women lie to each other because women are trying to get money and men are trying to get sex so we all have to lie to each other because yeah i don't get it dude I don't because get it's it. all dishonest and transactional yeah i oh, i've picked out another phrase to ask you again as a as a married woman um, dealing with the never-ending litany of female crap when you're married. Um, so, Savvy, I wanted to ask, did you stop using the toilet when you got married and just start going all over the house? No. Sometimes sometimes our dog does. Sometimes our dog will, will pee on the floor when there's fireworks because he doesn't, he's too scared to go Aww. outside and he refuses to go out. So maybe that's what they mean, is that if you get a dog Maybe together... Myron's gotten confused. Like, he's heard the phrase, like, bitches, and he's yeah, gotten confused he between dog and, dog and women. <laughs> yeah, it's women and dogs are very similar. You get them confused because they're both bitches, and they're... Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. They're both, you You would say, who's a pretty girl to both of them, and... <laughs> yeah! They're, they both are supposed to listen <laughs> and uh, do, do whatever you command them to do. So they're basically oh, the same thing. Oh, my God. Thing. I think that's Yeah, what, totally. I I think that's what he's talking about is that you yeah okay the, the next like quote that i pulled out because it absolutely blew my mind so he's talking he's like you know talking about energy this whole section i found was basically to me it seems like men who really want reassurance that um women are responsible for everything like it literally has a a moment that reassures the reader that yes all women are the crazy ex it's not you <laughs> like um and it says the second thing to know is one of the key tenets of buddhism and i was like where the fuck is he shitbag did that come from <laughs> like what the fuck this is out of nowhere it's like chapter seven like and in buddhism and you're like what, is the reader supposed to be a buddhist or do, do we assume that we all know that and he says um desire is the source of all suffering which is wrong like the the actual quote from the buddha is desire is the root of suffering and it's it is one of the four noble truths and i'm just like like the fact that he's attributing that to the destructive desire for pussy is really like i don't think that's what the buddha intended <laughs> but if you use the phrase desire it doesn't matter the context it's all it's all the same thing it's it's it has the same word so it's the same thing uh, absolutely insane he like so he then he has this policy section and he literally lists things as if he's considering yes. like a financial investment instead of just and i wrote this part of my notes in all caps instead of just dating somebody you fancy like a normal human being yeah. like it's okay to have like these are things that i really would be like a deal breaker for me and these are things that i'm not so sure like it's okay to have that but to like sit there and like spreadsheet out your exact requirements for a relationship is to me really weird because it's more about again maybe i'm just a crazy emotional woman but it's more about like feelings and enjoying spending time with someone and like emotional maturity and connectedness on those levels like but no it's like you've got to work out if you're gonna buy flowers he says you've got to work out the exact amount of time you worked to earn the money for flowers and it's like if if you have enough money to blow like what he was suggesting earlier like 50k on a car to impress women like how badly do you need to work out exactly the amount of minutes you worked to earn like a bouquet of flowers like it's, I don't... Yeah, it's so like uh cold and calculated in this way that i'm like this doesn't feel like yeah. a human interacting he's like you have to ask yourself who is the beneficiary what are my costs what are my opportunity costs what is the realistic chance of a return on my investment which that's a fancy way of saying how likely is she to actually have sex with me because that's the only return yeah. um <laughs> when i consider all the above is it worth it and he's like we have a limitless number of do's and don'ts don't marry don't date single moms he has both of those things in there so i'm like okay we don't date single moms but we also can't get married so is there just do are no children ever do children not exist or like are you supposed to because if you never get married like i guess you could make a commitment without legally getting married but it's so but like you're the gonna make her into a single mom very... yeah it's it's never f like i've never fully got it like 
I don't want children, so I wouldn't probably date somebody with children. And I that's, you either, know, there's all sort of yeah. whatever reasons there. But like some people love children and they become part of the family and are like part of the reason that that relationship is so great. And then like, it's always like, ooh, single mums, like how could women be single mums? And it's like, but but aren't a lot of them single mums because of the men who left them? So is that like maybe a, do you want to direct some of that discussion at men? But no, it's always like, it's like single mums exist in a vacuum. Like they just pop into being on their own. And like, right, it's like, it's, how did the child I'll, that made you a mom come into being? In the majority of cases, a man put it there. So yeah. I don't know, dude. The early, um, the only bit that was like again vaguely useful sort of common sense in this is the bit where it says ask yourself does the girl really like me and if she doesn't don't try to convince her otherwise and i actually think i, I kind of wish that every like red pill game book would like say something like that because a lot of the um, like dating advice stuff for men is like persistence is key and this to myron's credit this book does actually say like don't be weirdly persistent if a woman says she isn't interested so small mercies i feel like part of this section was created solely to refute pickup artistry stuff it's like you it's like the calls coming from within the house right so the red pill and the pickup mm. artistry and all those communities are kind of tied together but i feel like this part of the book wouldn't need to be said if pickup artists didn't exist in the first place so he's like a perfect yes. example buy or do you rent an apartment rent is stupidly expensive but to get laid there is a huge push for men to rent their own place so they're not living at home and i'm like Maybe among pickup artists there is, but like without someone telling you that, no, not necessarily. You don't necessarily it's like, why would you spend two thousand dollars on a nice apartment every month just for the chance that you might get laid? And I'm like, I think the majority of people who are renting an apartment have multiple reasons other than just I want to have a place to have sex. I'm pretty sure because if, if you needed a place to have sex that bad, you can go to a hotel or something. Or if the other person has if you have another, yeah, but it's like, that doesn't need to be said, except for pickup artists saying, don't live at home, girls don't like that, girls think it's bad when you live at home. If they didn't say that in the first place, this wouldn't even be a problem that you needed to solve. Because no one, no one cares if you have a nice apartment, like, ah. Uh. It makes his audience sound like, like, sad. Like, the fact that you would consider this, like, this is what you think. You think that you should spend all your money on impressing women, and it's like, I don't think they would do that. <laughs> like, if they do, that's... That's not the majority, for sure. I do need to talk about, in chapter 8, he goes into how great Andrew Tate is for a while. I, I found the, the page where he talks yes. about Andrew Tate, where he says, Oh yeah. Look at all the hate Andrew Tate got. This Tate hate didn't hurt Andrew, but it did hurt all the right people who hated seeing a strong, good-looking, successful man enjoying his life, living how he wanted to, and not giving a single fuck what they thought otherwise. By being a superior man with an exceptional life and an excellent income, you piss off everyone who has been brainwashed to hate you or blame you from their problems. And I'm like, okay, first of all, people didn't hate Andrew Tate for being successful. People hated him because he was uh, excusing sexual assault he has been accused of human trafficking and assaulting women and things like that i think those are the reasons people hate him but even on top of that for him to classify andrew tate as a successful man enjoying his life the way that andrew tate got rich in the first place other than like he had his boxing and his reality tv stuff but his big hustle that got mm -hmm. him into this whole like manosphere in the first place was that he ran this cam girl business where he would have men pretend to be women and he'd have women pose as these online models and then scam men out of lots of money. So for a book that's talking about how like the simp economy is a problem and being a uh, doing and porn is, is destroying society and it's making women into slots and it's making men just pay for sex instead of sex. like Andrew Tate is part of the cause of that. He was someone who was making money off of that system and scamming people. So I don't know how you can say that he is a successful man living his life and doesn't deserve the hate, but anyone else who would do this, it's just because it's just because he's wealthy and agrees with you on some points. If it had been anyone else doing these things, you'd be using them as an example of why society has gone to shit with the new contract. Yeah, exactly. It's completely contradictory. Like th this bit, because this is like the pulling it all together bit, this bit is like full of kind of hilarious stuff. Th he includes this quote from future i don't know who that is or what that is it's, i presume that's a person or it says uh chase a check never chase a bitch which i thought was kind of funny i kind of yeah. want that as like a bumper sticker but again i don't have a car so <laughs> i don't have a car maybe um, i'll get it as a tattoo 
He said, Myron says, society is correct in mocking and ridiculing the brokies, soy boys, fat asses, and incels of America. Like, fuck, wow. Man's empathy knows no bounds. <laughs> and then he goes off again about porn, like he hates porn. He's complaining about fictional porn addicted men again. It's like, this is just like his all his personal feelings on things randomly thrown together in this nonsensical way. <laughs> He's got another quote that makes the reader sound so fucking tragic. You got way more important shit to do than chasing pussy before you die and i'm I mean, like it's true yeah it's true <laughs> like, it's not wrong why, why does he assume that that's his audience <laughs> oh yeah and he t- he mentions post prime women in their early 30s and i'm just like okay <laughs> in their early 30s the wall is getting like i mean i'm in my early 30s time. most of yeah. my friends who are in their early 30s are getting married and having their first kids right now and stuff so i'm pretty sure that is that is prime but Whatever, whatever you say, whatever you say. I love this rant. He goes on, women do not want the 24-year-old drunk guy at a party who secretly lives at home as he tries to pay off his student loans from his business administration degree. They do not want the skinny, fat soy boy who avoids the gym like the plague and compensates by agreeing with all women's Marxist and feminist talking points. They don't want the (laughs) Adderall-addicted millennial who did nothing to improve his life while desperately searching for a girl to give his worthless life meaning and purpose. (laughs) It's just like all of the- he's like throws so much shade in the last chapter. It's basically like him having a fucking rat- like he must have been- It's kind of funny actually, like yeah. It is! No, but my favourite bit, Savvy, this is my favourite part of the whole book. This is what made me convinced finally that this is a grift, right? He has this hard-on for Tom Brady for a couple of paragraphs. Oh my god, Tom Brady! And he says- (laughs) <laughs> oh my god, he says, if Brady had read this book and had red pill awareness, he would have given Giselle less and she would stay in line. Like he actually thinks if Tom Brady read my if Tom Brady read my book, he wouldn't be divorced. Like, this must be a grift. Nobody is that deluded. Like And in all caps, in all caps, it says, All relationships are the responsibility of women. So doesn't that make this whole book kind of irrelevant? Because women are supposed right. to sort it all out anyway. <laughs> so like, what a me- is that just like a sign for men to be like, just don't care? Like it, it literally says in bold, you are no longer responsible for the outcome of this or any other relationship. Like it takes that implication from the crazy exes bit and outright tells people it's never your fault. Well, tells these men it's never your fault. So if your relationship goes wrong, it's because women are awful. And that's like the rounding off like sentiment of this whole book. And I'm like, what? Okay, what advice is this? <laughs> what, what is this for? How does this help? It's definitely a grift. This is a cash grab. I don't think that Myron Gaines is honest. I don't think he is arguing in good faith about anything. I think no. he found a population, much like a lot of red pill influencers, found a population of men who are feeling lost in life, are struggling with a few things, and decided, here's how I can capitalize on that by selling you books and courses about how it's not your fault and it's women's fault, and I've constructed this whole conspiracy theory that doesn't make sense when you look too closely at it, but I'm gonna make you feel good enough about yourself the whole time that you're gonna be beholden to me forever. I I think it's a it's a huge grift, and uh, I have no respect for this guy. Yeah. And but there were the, some funny parts to this that made me laugh, so I'll give him that. There are some like there are some standout quotes in this that did make me laugh a lot. Um and, and here's the other thing, right? This is the final chapter, and it like ends with recommendations of other books and right. videos and stuff by Red Pill Men. But the whole point of the book, according to Myron, is to be the simple guide that pulls it all together. Yeah. To to have all the information for you so you don't need all these other things. It's like if you're assuming that people need more resources, then surely this book has failed by whatever metric it was meant to succeed. So, no, I think it... He doesn't even just say you should read these. He says they're mandatory. He's like, after this, your mandatory next book you have to read is by all these other red pill men. You have to read these, like, four other books next. And it's like, but you just told me in this book that if I want to be a successful man, all I have to do is get a good job that's important to society, work on myself, and not live solely for women, and that the right woman will find me when the time comes if I continue to just be a good person. But that's not enough. I also have to still learn more about why secretly women had this huge conspiracy to destroy the world. You have to learn all of the statistics about why women are evil. (laughs) Otherwise, you 
can't exist comfortably in the red pill manosphere. I don't know. I have no idea. Like, yeah, this was a this was a weird read. It like it doesn't heavily contradictory you can't really tell what he wants there's like a few things where it's like okay he's got like some sort of personal issue with like fat women and like he's like he's got some weird and porn and like he's got some weird stuff he treats men like these pathetic little sex addict like animals desperate for a crumb of pussy that will do anything that will stomp on their best friends for like a crumb of pussy and like and women as just some sort of like weird out there evil conspiracy that have all these tactics and stuff around dating is just a way to get things from men and blah 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 just like classic red pill it's just rehashing i'm assuming they've said all of this on the podcast like i'm sure they this have has been in all of the main talking points have been in other books that I've read from these kind of people, like pickup artists and like red pill stuff. This is just recycling the same bollocks, like literally in some cases. In some cases, like, he just copy and pastes a quote from another book and puts it in there. That's why yeah. I think that at the end of the day, this is just him trying to make a quick buck on this because for sure the the podcast has all the same information. The book has a really catchy and inflammatory title that'll get people intrigued. Mm -hmm. That's all this is. It's nothing more to it than that. Myron Gaines is a, a scammer. He doesn't deserve anyone's attention. But it was a funny book to read. I'm really glad that we had to it have was. fun. <laughs> it was funny, yeah. Just like, yeah, calling your reader a pussy in all capitals is the fucking funniest thing. I wish more books did that because it really made me laugh. <laughs> it really motivated me to become better. Oh, God. Okay, that was amazing. Thank you so much, Savvy. Leave your thoughts down below, everyone. And uh, yeah, we'll see you soon.